You know, he's as a president, he turned out to be one of the strongest, fiercest advocates for the state of Israel that this country has ever known. And isn't it great to have a president who means what he says and says what he means? Like when he said that he would destroy the caliphate ISIS, and he did. When the guy before him called it a JV team and couldn't figure out whether he should contain it, dismantle it, or destroy it, none of which he did. But Donald Trump did what he said he was going to do. And like when he said he would decertify and renegotiate the Iran deal, when the other guy gave them $150 billion while they yelled death to Israel and death to America, while they were hiding their nuclear development facilities, this president did what he said, and he, he walked away from that agreement and renegotiated it. And now Iran is suffering. And he's a man who means what he says. When he said that he would move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, that was not only a geographical shift, but it was a seismic shift that signaled to the world that the United States was a true and long ally of the state of Israel. And it was something that all the other guys said, including the guy before him and Bush and Clinton, but he did it when they didn't. And so I come here to say shalom and thank you to the Zionist Organization of America, to my good friends up here, all of you. And as I look at Dr. Bob Shillman when he talked about the book he wrote in 2019, I was going to ask him for a copy of it because he said it was a checkbook. Except I'm not running for office anymore, doctor, so you don't have to worry about that. The truth is that I am doubly honored to receive the Mort Zuckerman Man of uh, uh, the Mort Zuckerman Award. He was a man of principle who I knew, and he was someone that even though we owned the Daily News, a left-leaning newspaper, he was a staunch supporter of Israel. And he didn't let politics determine what was in his heart in a presidential election when he had that newspaper support the candidate that he believed would support Israel. You know, I stand here today a huge supporter of Israel. And when I think about my past, the past family, my heritage from whence I come. I am Lebanese Christian. My, my mother, Esther, and my father, Nasser, both deceased and rest in peace. But they taught me that my grandparents in Lebanon in the late 40s assisted the movement of those who wanted to go to that new state of Israel. And they were very dug in in doing whatever they could to make sure that they had safe passage to get to the state of Israel. And so you see, you see it is etched in my DNA. It is etched in what I believe in. And it was my mother Esther who taught me that we must fight for the underdog. 
And so for 30 years as a prosecutor, as a judge, as a district attorney, as someone who ran for office five times, I fought for the underdog, for the person that nobody cared about, the person who couldn't defend himself, the person who had no rights. And I realized when I became the district attorney that one of the first things that I was confronted with was anti-Semitism, and I couldn't understand it. I had started the first domestic violence program in the nation, and I was fighting for battered women and abused children. And then I heard about anti-Semitism, and I said, well, wh wh what's going on? Little did I, I didn't have to think very long to go back into my history and realize that for 2,000 years, the Jews have been targeted. For 2,000 years, the Jews have been people that others want to destroy. And so, when I realized that there was anti-Semitism, there were swastikas put on golf courses, there was all kinds of swastikas painted in cemeteries, at homes, of people who had survived the Holocaust. I decided that we would stand shoulder to shoulder, 2,000 of us in the rain, to march as a young prosecutor. I said, we need to make noise. We need people to understand that we're not going to tolerate this because hate is hate. Hate leads to violence, and violence leads to retaliation. And no one understands better than someone who has survived the Holocaust the ripple effect that these hate crimes have. And so I fought for a hate crimes law in New York. And I fought to make sure that we passed that law. And I was present when it was signed. And I testified in Congress to make sure that Congress understood the devastation of what to some might be a simple criminal mischief. And so, yes, I believe in Israel. I believe in fighting for the people who are entitled. They are entitled to have a state of their own. They are entitled. They don't need the Balfour Declaration. I don't care if the Palestinians agreed or disagreed. They are entitled to that land in the Middle East. And yet today, we still are confronted with the hate. The BDS that Governor Ron DeSantis has so brilliantly combated. Aryan Nation, that as a DA, I had my investigators infiltrate. Individuals who want anti-Semitism to be a part of the education of our children in schools, in colleges, and universities. It is pervasive. And you know, in this time of political correctness, everybody says, well, be careful what you say. And you know, they want to kill people. And we have to worry about what we say. They want to destroy a people. And we have to be polite. Nonsense. Now, I have this TV show. It's on Saturday nights, and I'm, it's live. I'm sitting there Saturday nights. I was upset one Saturday night because there was a certain congresswoman who was trashing Jewish congressmen and women. And she said that they had dual loyalties. To Israel and the United States. They didn't respond. They didn't respond. I did. I did. Thank you. I paid a price. 
You know I paid a price. And it's okay. Because I believe in Israel. I believe in speaking up for Israel and speaking against those who talk out of both sides of their mouths, who want to destroy Israel and take away its ability to defend itself. In the end, it all comes down to what Elie Wiesel has often said, which is that if history has taught us anything, it is that we should believe the threats of our, en of our enemies more than the promises of our friends. That we should recognize them when they tell us they want us dead. When they tell us they want to destroy us. And for me, Elie Wiesel was my hero. To do nothing helps the abuser, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. You know, I've had occasion to go to Israel four or five times. I've led a de delegation. I was there on the day that the embassy was moved, the 70th anniversary of the, uh, the birthday of the State of Israel. I even interviewed Bibi. I love Bibi. What a leader. What a leader this man is. Wow. I was very fortunate to do that. And you know, when I was there, we did, a lot of, um, we did a lot of traveling, and uh, there was some rocket fire, and it, I felt protected because of the Iron Dome. I felt protected because I knew that the United States was always there under this president. Yeah. And I've seen pictures of people in the IDF. I mean, I've met them, the women, the generals. Some of them have come to my home in, uh, in New York. But there is one picture that every IDF Air Force commander has in their office. And it is a picture of a flight of the Israeli fighter planes in formation buzzing Auschwitz, 50 feet above the crematoria, and the earth shaking with the sound of the fury of those planes. But it wasn't just the breaking of the sound barrier by the fighter planes painted with the Star of David, it was the roar of six million holy souls rejoicing and shouting triumphantly, Am Yisrael High! Am Yisrael High! Is there anyone in this room that has any doubt that if somehow there were a death factory for Jews anywhere in the world today that the United States and the IDF could and wouldn't circle the globe if necessary and totally and utterly destroy it as our allies so shamefully failed to do in World War II? Is there anyone in this room who has any doubt that that would happen? And just as we support the military, just as we support the state of Israel, we have to forever speak up and never remain silent in this world of those who continue to want to destroy the state of Israel and destroy the Jewish people. So it is time to do what I've always done, and that is never tiptoe.
tiptoe around it. Go right in its face. It's not time to be politically correct. It's not time to be pussyfooting around. It's not time to be nice to people who hate us. It's time to be clear and forceful in where we stand and who we stand with. It's time, in fact, to be morally correct and not be politically correct. God bless you. God bless Israel. And thank you.